Hello out there, Hatchet Nation, your friendly neighborhood Hatchet Man, Brother Craig here. A little comment about Donald Trump's statement uh, about uh, being treated like he's being lynched. Uh, I'm in 100% agreement with Trump. Uh, you know, Clarence Thomas uh, described his treatment by these same wicked Democrats as, quote, a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who deign to think for themselves. What's, what's the difference with Donald Trump? So what, his skin's not brown like mine, his skin's not brown like Clarence Thomas, but this is a high-tech lynching for a man who deigns to think for himself, a man who deigns to put America first, not the swamp first. My big brother, Jesus Christ, spoke about the hireling versus the true son. Now, the true son, when danger comes at the flock, places himself between the flock and the danger. The hireling will not do that. In the swamp in Washington, D.C., and I'm a particularly ticked off at these weak Republicans who will not support this president. Oh, oh, I wish he hadn't used that term. I mean, you little sissies. His use of that term is your opportunity to take that term away from the Democrats. The lynchers in, in, in Reconstruction and the Ku Klux Klan were Democrats, not Republicans. 1,300 white Republicans were lynched and 3,600 black Republicans were lynched. But it was Democrats lynching Republicans. And you nitwits, you don't understand history you don't understand opportunity. This, Donald Trump's use of that word is an opportunity if these low-fat Republicans, these, these, these weak blueberry tart Republicans would just grow a set of onions. It's ridiculous, the only Republicans in America that are toting a set of onions are Donald Trump and your friendly neighborhood hatchet man, Brother Craig, a, a small spattering of a few others that are in the public domain tote a set of onions. The rest of these Republicans are toting a set of blueberries. This is ridiculous to run and cry like a little Girl Scout because you don't like Donald Trump's language. The man is fighting a war. What do you expect? Is he supposed to say, please, Mr. and Mrs. Democrat, would you please cease and desist? I'm just, you know, I'm just a humble little president. I mean, give me a break. This is just, I'm more upset with you Republicans out there than I am with the Democrats. Because as I've been saying for years with this Republican-Democrat fight, it's like the alligator got loose in the zoo and he bit someone. Do you get mad at the alligator for doing what is natural to an alligator? Or do you get mad at the zookeeper? Now you Republicans out there, you run for office, every two years, four years, or six years, depending on the office, and you declare to us, vote for me. I'm the guy that can protect you from the alligator. This is what you say. No one put a gun to your head to make you run. You want to be a coward? If you want to participate in the swamp, be honest. Be an honest crook. Run as a Democrat. Now, if you want to be a Republican, you've got to be an onion toter. If you want to be a nice guy, I have a message for you, Mr. Republican. Go home. Play with your grandchildren. If you want to be a part of the Republican Party, if you want to call yourself a Christian, a conservative, a constitutionalist, a capitalist, if you want to call yourself a member of the Christian, conservative, constitutional, capitalistic coalition, you have to grow a set of onions. There are, there's no two ways about it. Mitt Romney is not a real Republican. And the only reason he's a senator, senator from Utah is because no true Christian conservative with a big enough set of onions ran against him to give the people of Utah something with which to contrast against Mitt Romney. That's the only reason. You give people a choice 
And final thing I'm going to say, and this is proof that we can take our country back. Final thing I'm going to say. I hope you all share this video all over the place. But this is it. When you take Republican Senator Stu Pidd and Republican Governor Goofball off of an issue, and the issue stands alone, as in a ballot initiative, conservatism wins hands down. Now, when you attach the takes these same issues, because every election, what is it about? Okay, the Democrats are going to support illegal aliens over citizens, criminals over crime victims, the convenience of the mother over the innocent baby. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. The Democrats are always on the wrong side. They even voted God off the island at their convention to the applause of tens of thousands of Democrat delegates. So, the issues when it's just a ballot initiative, in my home state of Virginia, a state where the legislature is 51-49, okay? The Republicans are holding on to both chambers of the legislature by one vote. And the top five elected at large members of the uh, legislature, of, of, the, of the government, are all Democrats, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the attorney general, and both United States senators, five to zero. But the state of Virginia is 72% Christian and 72% conservative. You want proof? A few years ago, there were two ballot initiatives in Virginia. One was the marriage amendment. 58% of the citizens of Virginia in a 50-50 political state now, because Republicans are incompetent at bringing home their natural voters. So the, the politics are 50-50, but the citizens are 58% a conservative issue. You want more? When property rights were put up as a ballot initiative, 75%. What does that mean? 100% of the Republicans voted yes, we want to protect our property rights. And listen, folks, half of the Democrats had enough sense to know that they need to protect their own property. Half of the Democrats. So don't tell me we can't do this. The people are there. The leadership is weak. I'm looking at, it's an election season. I'm looking at all these Republicans running around trying to be an independent, trying to be democrat light. -like. Don't want to be a Trump Republican. I would say I hope they lose. But I can't say that because we're holding on by one vote. I gave a speech on Governor Ralph Northam's front porch this past spring when that joker, a week after New York State passed a law legalizing aborticide and infanticide, we were one vote away. One vote away now. This thing would have went out of committee if there was one less Republican and one more Democrat, that bill that they tried to mimic New York State to legalize aborticide and infanticide in the state of Virginia and Governor Ralph Northam would have signed it. We were one vote away from that bill being sent to Governor Ralph Northam. So 2,000 Christians showed up in the man's front yard. I stood on his front porch with a dozen or so other are great speakers. And I was honored and blessed to give the keynote, the final speech that day. You can find that speech titled Nine Minutes of Truth in Richmond, Virginia. But folks, that is what Democrats will give us. And that's the only reason why I don't say, you know, I hope these weak Republicans lose. I really hope that they get something that they don't deserve. They really don't deserve to win. But I pray to God that you show up, overlook their shortcomings, and vote for these jokers anyway, because the alternative is really, really 
ugly. Look, that's about it. I've got a lot to do, but you know, I've been hearing all day about you know all these 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 blueberry toting Republicans need to trade those blueberry tarts in. Go down to the grocery store, get you a bag of Vidalia onions, okay? And uh, ask your wife to make you some steak and onions for dinner tonight and uh, put that tofu and celery away. Look, anyway, this is your friendly neighborhood hatchet man, Brother Craig. Be sure to go to our website, thereallyrealdeal.com. Over and out.